So my name is Helen. I'm the regulatory manager at Oxitec, and I'll be talking about uh, ticks. And to do so, just a second. I'll start talking a little bit about the friendly technology developed by the company. So uh, the friendly pests, they carry two introduced genes, the self-limiting one and the marker genes, and both of them are introduced via conventional genetic engineering techniques. So we don't use gene drives or we don't use genome editing. And these genes, they are non-toxic, they are safe, and the releases are only done by males. So we just release males. This is really important for some species. For example, we have mosquitoes being released and only the male mosquitoes bite. So uh, for some species, this is very important. And the product is traceable in the field since we have the marker gene and it's a self-limiting gene. So after some generations, you won't find the gene on the environment anymore due to Mendelian inheritance. So since this is a GMO, it follows the Mendelian inheritance. And after some generations, it's not possible to find the gene on the environment anymore. It's a scalable production. So this is very important to go commercial. And uh, the biological mode of action is based on the male transmitting the genes for their offspring, and then all the female offspring can survive. So the male is not sterile, as many people ask. It, it can mate, and once it mates with the female from the nature, all the female offspring can survive. This brings positive impact for communities in agriculture, as I'll show here. So uh, a powerful dual performance benefits from the friendly technology. Uh, the first one is stark pest reduction. So we can see here in Brazil, we already have uh, some products uh, commercially approved by CTN Bio. So we have a, a strain of Aedes aegypti and a strain of Spodoptera frugiperda. And we can see in, in field tests a reduction of more than 90% of the, the pest relative to untreated areas. And so this uh, number here is based on real tests. And we also see a uh, dilution of insecticide resistance for, for these strains. And we can see on modeling studies that probably we'll have uh, more than 50 generations uh, that will be more susceptible to insecticide. Our products uh, have more than 100 peer-reviewed publications about the technology, and Oxitec is a globally respected leader in arthropod biotechnology. The friendly technology can be applied to diverse kinds of pests, so we can uh, use this technology on the health market, on agriculture, and also on livestock. So uh, we can have mosquitoes, ticks, flies, beetles, moths, and, any, and many other arthropods being genetically modified with this technology. The pipeline of current programs is based on the insects that you can see here, and also the arachnid we are going to talk about today. And we have the Aedes aegypti uh, already approved and commercially launched in Brazil last year. So last year, we already had people buying their boxes uh, with mosquitoes, genetically modified here in Brazil. And we have other programs for health, public health, like uh, Aedes albopictus and Anopheles for malaria being developed in UK. I forgot to mention, but Oxitec is a UK-based company with labs and uh, all the, the staff here in Brazil. Uh, on the animal health, we have the Asian blue tick project. That is the one we are going to talk about today. And in agriculture, we have uh, the fall armyworm. That is the Spodoptera frugiperda strain that was already approved by CTN Bio and that is undergoing scale-up pilots here in Brazil on cornfields around the country. 
So about the cattle tip program, uh, we have this uh, project that is a proposed solution to the world's most damaging livestock tick. So the Asian blue tick uh, transmits pathogens uh, that causes severe diseases uh, on cattle and causes uh, nearly $1 billion in dairy yield losses globally and more than 3 billion uh, annual losses here in Brazil. The ticks, they've been increasing resistance to acaricides and a caricide resistance makes it difficult to control and threats reinvasion. So um, anticipated uh, Oxitec cattle tick future benefits is reduce pest populations to enable preventive tick management, reduce reliance on ex existing tools, provide safe and non-toxic management without harmful side effects, and reduce resistance in pest population. So the, the project is on the feasibility phase. And once we have all of these things completed, then we can move to another phase uh, approaching uh, commercial and uh, regulatory scales. So uh, we need to develop the tools. So as I mentioned, Oxitec has already developed this technology for insects, but TIC is the first arachnid that we are working with. So this brings us some new challenges, biological challenges, genetic challenges. So we need to validate if the DNA delivery methods that the company already uses for insects is going to work, are going to work for the ticks. Uh, also, we need to understand how to implement, implement the self-limiting system for this new uh, arthropod. We also need to validate future impact and implementation. So we have a lot of modeling studies going on to simulate future deployment scenarios. So different from mosquitoes and different from moths, how is the plan? What is the plan to deploy the arachnids on the field? Are we going to release eggs? Are we going to release adults? So all of this together with the biological procedure of the, the arachnid is very important for the project. Uh, we need to prove the principle. So the parasitic phase of male adult ticks and mating behavior uh, must be characterized. So we really need to understand how the, the, the animal behaves and whole animal proof of concept studies are ongoing. So we have a partner in Morocco that has cattle facilities. And then we have all this uh, proof of concept in whole animal studies there using white type strains. And then once uh, all of this is complete, we can, uh, we can pass through the transition to the full development phase uh, where cattle management practices must be characterized in relevant geographies to inform target product uh, profile. So um, sometimes different geographies bring different ne uh, needs. So we need to understand this for the project. And also we need to, to identify future beneficiary groups in relevant geographies to talk about the project. So uh, as I said, the project is going through the feasibility uh, phase. And the idea is to have this, uh, this product going to field around 2027, so some years from now. But uh, it's a very interesting project for the company since it's the first one, uh, not with an insect, as I mentioned before. So I'm not a molecular biologist. I'm just the regulatory affairs manager. But here you have the TICS project leader email. Uh, if you have more uh, technical questions that maybe I cannot answer, Mattia will be really happy to help. So that's it. Thank you.